Everything in life is an interaction. When you grab a cup of coffee, you communicate. If you're going for a job interview, you communicate. And if you're going for the IELTS exam, you need to communicate. Your life could be in a very different position just by improving your communication skills. And yet, we've never really thought about how we could hone this essential skill. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you five tips that you can utilize starting today to hone and improve your communication skills. All right, so this first point is a very big blunder that a lot of students make before their IELTS exam, which is not warming up your voice before you enter the exam hall. Now, you may be hearing this strategy for the first time. So let's understand what it actually means. Warming up your voice simply means uh, when you are going for something which makes you very anxious or very nervous. Let me give you an example. I'm sure you have faced this in your viva during your school times. So when we used to go for our vivas, our voice would, would sit down and the pitch or the, uh, the volume would not be as beautiful as it usually is. Uh, so what we need to do is before you enter the exam hall, let's say after you step down from your vehicle, a great thing would be to warm up. Now, how do you warm up your voice? Very simple. Uh, you could just yawn verbally ah, or you could uh, take out the vowel sounds. So something to just um, activate or something to just improve the volume of your voice. So for example, <clears throat> simple, <clears throat> clearing your throat and then uh, e, a, o, u. I know I sound like a monkey. This is why I said do it before you enter the exam hall, right after you step down the vehicle. So um, even before you enter the center, that's a great thing to do. It makes sure that your voice is perfectly clear and audible. Otherwise, you may have to clear your throat certain times, many times in, in between and during the exam session, which uh, gives the impression that the other person is nervous or anxious. Uh, the next mistake that a lot of people make is answering uh, open-ended questions as if they were close-ended questions. Now, what does it mean? Close-ended questions are questions which um, require yes or no. So for example, if I ask you, do you like ice cream? You, you would probably respond saying yes or no, and that's about it. But everything, every question in the IELTS exam, even if it if it is phrased like this, do you like ice cream? It is still supposed to be answered like, how much do you like ice cream? Or for example, if they ask you, do you, do you play sports? They're not exactly asking you, do you? They don't want a yes or no answer. They are asking you, what type of sports do you play? Uh, do you like playing sports? Why or why not? So things like that. Never, even, even uh, if you're going for a job interview, it's a great idea to never answer with simple yes or no or never give a one-liner answer. The best thing would be, you need to go there, flaunt your fluency and vocabulary. So answering them as you would a close-ended question. All right. Number three is using too many fillers. Now fillers are just words that people use to fill in the gaps. I'm not sure why, but surprisingly, we are very, very uncomfortable with pauses. Even though your pause is your best friend, especially when you want to emphasize your point. So in the IELTS exam and even in real life, do not be afraid to pause and never fill your speech with mindless fillers. For example, words like actually, basically, like, you know, and now there is nothing wrong with these words as it is. The words are perfectly fine parts of speech in English, they're, they're words. The problem arises when we put them, we insert them in places where they don't belong. So as long as I'm using the word like to give an example, so for example, let's say if I say uh, I like animals like cat. So I'm giving that, using that to give an example, it's perfectly fine. But if I start inserting it randomly everywhere, that is where the problem arises. The fourth mistake is using only simple sentences. Now, simple sentences, um, I don't exactly mean simple language. I mean grammatically simple sentences. So a simple sentence is one which holds only one piece of information or only one main idea, only one thought, one clause, 
So, for example, imagine if I speak like this. My father is a banker. He's 50 years old. Um, he likes swimming. He's a national level swimmer. That sounds very repetitive, monotonous, and it doesn't sound natural at all. So simply avoid using four simple sentences and just make a complex sentence. So how you could do that is just join all your pieces of information. So something like my father, who is a retired bank manager, uh, like swimming and used to be a national level swimming champion. Ta-da! You have a complex or a compound sentence. And now time for strategy number five. Now, um, of course, I couldn't possibly make a video on communication skills and close it without talking about pronunciation, could I? So, of course, pronunciation, one of the trickiest aspects, which a lot of us are very touchy about. Um, what exactly does it mean? Does it mean an accent? What, what do they look for in the IELTS exam? So, in the IELTS exam, pronunciation has absolutely nothing to do with an accent. All of us have an Indian accent. I, I very proudly have an Indian accent, so that's fine. So it does not mean accent. What it means is just saying the word in the right way. <laughs> that's putting it simply. There are multiple aspects to it. So for example, the first one would be having the right word stress. Maybe a new term for a lot of us. Um, sounds like another stress that IELTS has given us. But yes, what it means is every word in the English language, every, is emphasized on a particular vowel, which means we stress or stretch or emphasize one vowel in each word. For example, the word elephant. Have you ever thought why is it elephant and why can't I say elephant? Now it's a very basic word, so we probably never thought about it. But then there are certain words that we really mispronounce because we do not stress them on the correct vowel. Let me give you an example. For example, the word academic. Have you heard it being called, very frequently called, academic? So that is not the correct uh, stress. The stress should be on the E in this case. Just like in pandemic, similarly, it should be on academic, the E. So this is a very commonly mistressed word. Similarly, another thing which comes under pronunciation is the tone tone simply the intonation so uh, how the sound should fall and rise when you're excited it should rise and if you're sad or you're talking about something really sad you your tone would just uh, fall off so if you don't do that then you sound like the guy in the mutual fund ad who says mutual funds are subject to market risk please read the offer document carefully before investing and I'm sure that sounds very bizarre so unless you want to sound like that I recommend you make sure you talk naturally you practice it if you want and make sure your speech goes up when you're talking about something interesting or it goes down when you're talking about something which is boring or sad and finally the last thing that i want to talk about is silent alphabets so silent alphabets cer certain alphabets are usually silent in the english language which some of us really over pronounce uh, for example the alphabet B in the word plumber so I'm sure you heard it being pronounced as plumber right the alphabet B is supposed to be uh, silent plumber just like it, it usually is silent after the after the M so for example I would say thumb or dumb so words like that another very common uh, silent alphabet is uh, in, in the word that I've seen being mispronounced, sword, which I'm sure we've heard it being called sword. So being aware of certain mispronunciations, working on them um, within time, that would help you remove those before you take the exam. And lastly, so before we finish, I would like to talk about very commonly mispronounced words, which are just mispronounced for no reason at all. So uh, one very common example is the word uh, mischievous, which is pronounced, usually I've heard it being pronounced as mischievous, vious, when if you think about it in the spelling, there's no I after the V. So it should be mischievous or 
right and another very common one is the disease asthma which we just pronounce the th as it is so i'm sure you've heard its regular pronunciation i don't have to do that for you and of course another one uh, interesting one is the word healthy so i hope you can hear me healthy it's not the not the d from diksha it's the t th from thank you so healthy but we've heard it we've always been pronouncing it as healthy so probably that's why it's become a part of our uh, language all right so with that i am going to call it today and this is all about my help for you for your communication skills and of course um the best thing to do would be to let an expert take care of your communication and your pronunciation skills and do check out leaf scholars website to check our courses also please like and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you bye bye